we are on live sir yeah dear facebook pure virology viewers after yesterday's uh, 200th talk uh, brain uh, storming session on uh, lasers uh, tfl homium by oliver traxer sir today suddenly we are going to the different subject in fact open surgical urological technique related to the female urology uh, the clitoroplasty to be honest uh, uh, subject so that's why we have soundarya here a uh, female urologist at preeti hospital who is very much interested in buccal mucosal erythroplasty and she has knowledge about clitoral blood supply nerve supply and the advantages of dorsal and ventral even though this topic is not related uh, with uh, um, uh, with this uh, background i request soundarya to conduct this program along with dr samir trivedi and i thank dr samir for giving the opportunity recently we met in the conference i came to know that he is very senior urologist from uh, varanasi and uh, he is doing a lot of reconstructive work related to the female let us listen from him the topic today soundarya over to you yes thank you sir it's a really a privilege to introduce dr samit trivedi sir sir is the professor and head department of urology institute of medical Di institute of medical sciences banaras hindu university varanasi he has published more than 90 papers in national and international journals he is the review editor of frontiers in reproductive health he is the invited reviewer for various journals like world journal of urology international urogynecology journal bmc urology current urology opinion indian journal of medical research and indian journal of surgery he has won the economic times award 2021 for the inspiring urologist in india at times of india urology masters 2021 he is also the invited faculty at various national and international conferences over to you sir thank you dr sundarya thank you for the warm introduction and thank you to dr chandramohan sir i mean i'll start sharing my screen and in the meantime uh, it's a privilege to be here uh, in this facebook group i hope my screen is visible Yes, sir. Your screen is visible, sir. So, first of all, my sincere gratitude and thanks to the Pure Group, uh, Dr. Chandra Mohan, sir, for giving me this opportunity and uh, this invitation. Uh, this is a very, very active Facebook group, and uh, the nearly nine thousand members, and uh, roughly three to four posts every day, and a very dynamic and vibrant kind of group in terms of urological discussions. so it's a great platform to share ideas and ultimately we all have a common goal of enriching our knowledge sharing whatever we know and learning a lot from others so with that background i thank you once again and uh, today's topic is slightly unconventional in the sense that it's not a very commonly performed procedure clitoroplasty uh, and uh, i thought it would be a good idea to discuss the finer aspects of it there have been few refinements in the surgical techniques over the years and uh, it would be a good idea to make especially youngsters aware about it since it's not commonly performed sometimes they do not see it during their training during their residency so it might be a good idea to give them some exposure of it and uh, clitoroplasty is mainly done for clitoral hypertrophy or clitoromegaly as it is called now that can happen on account of various reasons the most common ones are related to hormonal factors of which the most common cause is congenital adrenal hyperplasia Uh, with the incidence of about one in fifteen thousand, but there can be other causes for this hormonal stimulation, uh, like drugs or various tumors, and sometimes it's also idiopathic without any apparent cause. The overall reported incidence of clitoromegaly is roughly one to three per ten thousand newborns, but there is bound to be variation from this figure as well. The average dimensions of a clitoris are about five by sixteen millimeter. and this can be calculated in terms of what is called as a clitoral index which is the multiplication of width and length so a normal average clitoris should be about 80 mm square and the cut off for a clitoral index is 100 so anything over 100 is considered to be clitoromegaly and then there are grades of enlargement of clitoris the main reason why a clitoroplasty or surgical reduction of clitoris is required is for cosmesis and psychological reasons and of course uh it's very important to remember the functional aspect of the clitoris as well 
So it's not only the cosmesis part, but clitoris has a very important role in a female uh, from sexual point of view. So we'll come to that. So uh, it's a highly sensitive organ, very important for erogenous purposes, uh, very has got a very rich blood supply as well as now supply. In fact, uh, it is surprising to know that uh, glance clitoris is much more sensitive than a glance penis. Nearly three times more uh, cross corpuscles on a glance clitoris. And these are the receptors for uh, feeling pleasure as well as for temperature changes, especially cold. So in order to preserve this sensation so that the female can have a normal sexual life, it's very important to do proper neurovascular bundle preservation when we perform a clitoroplasty. And whether doing it by dorsal or ventral approach makes a difference, that is the focus of today's presentation. So just a brief review of anatomy before we proceed with the surgical procedure as such. A clitoris is exactly like glands, uh, exactly like penis in most aspects, uh, with a well-formed glands in both males and females, well-formed corpora cavernosa. However, in case of clitoris, the corpus spongiosum is not very well defined because the urethral development is separate right from the beginning. So the blood supply mainly comes from dorsal clitoral arteries, which are branches of internal pudendal. And the most important thing to remember is their location. They are running on the dorsal aspect of the clitoris. So around 1, 11 and 1 o'clock, and they lie in between the tunic albuginea and the bux fascia, below the bux fascia. And as they reach their termination towards the glands, they form a network around the distal part, part of the corpus cavernosum. And especially from the posterior aspect of the glands, which would be a, a ventral uh, aspect of glands, so to say. Similarly, is the nerve supply again from pudendal nerve, and these are somatic nerves, so basically responsible for the sensation part. And uh, these uh, two clitoral nerves, which are branches of internal pudendal nerve, uh, they again run almost parallel to the arteries at 11 and 1 o'clock, and again they end at glands. And all the physiological factors which govern the tumescence in a male penis are similar in a female in case of clitoris. So the most important thing to remember when you are planning a surgical procedure on clitoris is to first absolutely avoid injuring or in fact now even touching the dorsal pedicle of the phallus, which is a neurovascular bundle part, and also try to avoid any dissection in the dorsal plate of the glands. Sometimes the glands is quite enlarged and we have to do a resection of the glands. If that is to be done, that should be done towards the ventral aspect and not towards the dorsal aspect. So these are two essential principles of surgery on clitoris. So basically surgical techniques for dealing with clitoromegaly can be classified into three categories. The earliest one was a simple amputation of the clitoris, the so-called clitoridectomy. And this was done when the proper function of the clitoris was not clear. And it was thought anonymously that probably clitoris does not have any role in sexual function for a female. But then that has been proven wrong many years back and all such procedures are now obsolete. It has to be preserved. The second category of procedures is something called as clitoral recession in which the clitoris is simply mobilized and pushed back and hidden. Uh, I'll come to that in the next slide, hidden under the pubic symphysis. And the third category is probably the one which is commonly performed these days. And that is a reduction clitoroplasty. And usually it is a nerve sparing reduction clitoroplasty. It can be done either by a dorsal approach. That is you dis start dissecting dorsally, lift the neurovascular bundle, and then you perform a clitoroplasty. Or it can be done by a ventral approach in which you don't go dorsally at all. All that area is left untouched and all the dissection is done from the ventral aspects. So basically, this is a summary of the techniques which are available right now. So clitoral recession, this photograph is courtesy. This article published last year, 2021 from Korea. So uh, this uh, diagram is their copyright. So in the recession procedure, basically, as you can see, uh, a degloving incision, complete mobilization of the clitoris, and then it is simply pushed back under the pubic symphysis, as you can see in the last part of the diagram, the D part, and it is hidden under the pubic symphysis. So no resection of anything, it's simply a repositioning of the uh, clitoris. The main problem with this procedure is that uh, because there is a abundance of corporal tissue, cavernosal tissue, which has not been excised, and therefore during sexual stimulation, uh, this cavernosal tissue gets engorged because of erection and it can be painful. 
and secondly uh, burying it under the pubic symphysis can also interfere with the patient's micturition so because of mainly these two reasons most of the people who have performed these procedures have kind of done away with this recession clitoroplasty and have moved on to the reduction ones in which we will deal with so one is a dorsal approach in which as has been shown here the dissection is done dorsally after degloving and the neurovascular bundle is lifted off the corporal bodies then the corporal bodies are excised and then the clitoris the glans clitoris is repositioned into a more physiological location more proximal location and this is the ventral approach where after degloving two parallel incisions are given on the ventrum as you can see in the figure b and through this ventral incisions all the corpora, corpora cavernosal tissue has been excised completely till the base the base is transfixed and the dorsal part is totally left untouched there is no dissection in that area so there is almost zero possibility of injuring the uh, dorsal neurovascular bundle and then the remaining part of the glands along with this neurovascular bundle and a strip of tunica albuginea which has been left attached ventrally is then folded over or simply pulled back into a more normal location so this essentially is a summary of the techniques which are available so we i am going to show you two videos one of a ventral approach and one of a dorsal approach and uh, the dorsal approach video is slightly older we have stopped doing that procedure now we totally do all our clitoroplasties by a ventral approach so this video is just being shown to give you a comparison of the two techniques and why we feel that a ventral approach is superior so in the ventral approach of nerve sparing reduction clitoroplasty uh, either ga if it's a very small child or it can also be done under regional anesthesia in adults a lithotomy position a patient catheterized painting dripping all that is done and the first step is to take a stay suture then mark an incision which is a circumferential subcoronal incision about 5 to 6 cm millimeters proximal to the coronal sulcus and then a complete degloving of the clitoris is done like we do for penis for so many procedures it is very important to remember that the entire inner pubescial layer of the skin at the coronal margin especially on the dorsal aspect of the uh, clitoris should be left intact that is should be left with the collar of the skin or mucosa which is there attached to the glands because this cuff of the skin is got high innovation very rich innovation and therefore is highly sensitive so and this the skin is used to create the clitoral wood and as well as to improve the sensory capabilities of the glands after this degloving as i said earlier two vertical incisions are made over the degloved shaft uh, on the ventral aspect on either side of the corporal bodies and uh, this incision is deep enough to go through the bux fascia as well as through the tunica albuginea so the entire erectile tissue the corporal cavernosal tissue is exposed and all this erectile tissue is then excised leaving behind just a shell of the corporal body the shell means the tunica albuginea which is left attached to the dorsal part of the neurovascular bundle and therefore the dorsal neurovascular bundles are completely away from your site of dissection and if you need to do a reduction in the size of the glands if the glands is very large then this ventral approach can also be used to do a reduction glenuloplasty on the ventral aspect and then the remaining part of the glands and the attached neurovascular bundle along with the mucosa which we have saved earlier at the collar is then uh, positioned below the pubic arch and a small stump of the corporal bodies which is left behind is then anchored under the pubic symphysis so this kind of pushes the glans pen glans clitoris superiorly more upward and slightly backward so that is the most physiological position possible for a glans if it is sounding complicated the video will simplify it for you so we'll move to the video firstly the ventral approach part and uh, this is a <coughs> patient who was a case of dhd uh, she had a bilateral gonads uh, which were dysplastic and uh, she presented quite late at the age of 20 years with complaints of primary amenorrhea and hirsutism and uh, tenor 1 in terms of breast development and in terms of mgf score 6 out of 36 so excessive body hair or hirsutism was a presenting complaint uh, a complete evaluation of this patient was, was performed starting with the examination of the patient first and on examination uh, 
both the gonads were palpable in the bilateral inguinal area as has been shown here in the diagram there was a marked clitoromegaly with a phallic length of about 3 cm and a clitoral index of about 100 uh, square mm both the urethra and vaginal openings were present however the vaginal opening led to a kind of blind pouch of about 8 to 10 cm beyond that there was nothing the patient was subjected to an endocrine referral and all the investigations were performed she had a fairly high lh and fsh levels the testosterone was also very high karyotyping showed a 46 xx with a q sorry uh, with a deletion in the q arm and there was an sry uh, translocation as well so genotypically female but then there was an element of mosaicism and the patient was one of dst since she was reared as a female at the age of 20 there was no question of considering a gender reassignment uh, the mri pelvis confirmed the findings there was a hypoplastic uterus and a hypoplastic upper vagina but this is a vaginoscopy which was performed and it shows a blind ending pouch at about 6 to 7 cm starting with bilateral gonadectomy which was performed through small incisions these gonads were palpable in the inguinal area very easily so it was hardly 10 to 15 minutes job to take care of the both the gonads and then they were sent for histopathology and then we turned our attention to the now sparing clitoroplasty firstly the stay sutures were placed in order to give a proper exposure both the labia were separated an incision was marked a circumcoronal incision about 5 to 6 mm proximal to the coronal sulcus a stay suture taken at the glance injection of local anesthetic with adrenaline and then this circumcoronal deglobing incision was started it was carried all around and then the deglobing of the clitoris was started if you are in the correct plane this deglobing part becomes very easy and relatively bloodless <coughs> good traction counter traction and combination of sharp and blunt dissection can very easily achieve its objective of a complete deglobing of the clitoral shaft and you have to go right till the base till the suspensory ligament of the clitoris to completely free it from all sides so right up to the pubic symphysis there is a sharp dissection after the complete deglobing a tourniquet is applied and these are the parallel incisions which are given on the ventral aspect and these are full thickness incisions right through the datos bux fascia and the tunica albuginea once the tunica has been incised all the erectile tissue all the cavernosal tissue which is inside is now being dissected off from the tunical shell and it is very well apparent uh, that the sponges the, the cavernosal tissue the quality of it and it's very easily dissected using a sharp dissection a sharp scissor only the part left behind is the tunica albuginea which is the covering of the cavernosal body similar incision on the opposite side to take care of the opposite corpora cavernosa a combination of traction and counter traction and again dissection in the correct plane makes the life quite easy once all the corporal tissue has been lifted a loop is passed around it the dissection is completed and there is hardly anything on the ventral aspect so this whole corporal tissue is now detached from the glands so now we have got a stump of corporal tissue which has been clamped ligated dissected and then subsequently transfixed using sutures and this suturing is important because sometimes there can be profuse bleeding if it has not been tackled properly so all of us are dealing with cfns cases and the way we deal with stumps in cfns something like that uh, you do a complete suture ligation of this part so that takes care of the excessive corporal tissue and now leaving behind the glands and the attached neurovascular bundle and now this glands has to be repositioned back in its proximal location kind of buyer's flaps are being created and the apex of that buyer's flap is now anastomosed at 12 o'clock to the cuff of skin that we left behind on the dorsal aspect 
while performing a deglobing incision and that is our anchoring suture we hold it and that gives us a good idea about how to place the subsequent sutures in order to get a correct approximation and a good cosmetic appearance of the glands so the glands which was protruding 3 to 4 cm outside has now gone completely inside and has got a clitoral hood covering it we put a small drain in this case because there was some oozing which could have been bothered some normally we don't put a drain and the remaining sutures are tied in order to completely close the defect which has been created sometimes we need to excise this excess redundant skin and this is the final post op picture uh, the little bit of edema that is there that will subside in few days and the glands will almost be covered by uh, the clitoral hood so this was regarding the ventral approach the second way of doing it is by a dorsal approach which was popular earlier but nowadays not many people are in favor of this in it the initial steps are the same the position anesthesia and the preparation etc stay suture and degloving is again the same however in this case we start by making parallel incisions on either side of the neurovascular bundle over the dorsal aspect and this these incisions go deep through the bux fascia because the neurovascular bundles lie under the bux fascia above the tuni uh, tunica albuginea and this whole dorsal uh, neurovascular bundle complex is then dissected off the corporal bodies by a sharp dissection in order to completely lift this neurovascular bundles this is exactly similar to the technique that we use in males for say example peronis disease or for anywhere where we want to approach for putting uh, or in penile fracture where the defect is underlying the neurovascular bundle so the way we mobilize the neurovascular bundles in males is exactly the way it is done here uh, through a dorsal approach and once this whole neurovascular bundle has been dissected off then a reduction corporoplasty as described earlier is performed and the stems are ligated and the glands is then repositioned uh, under the pubic arch so this video shows the dorsal approach and this is a slightly older video quality may not be that good this was a young girl uh, who was having urogenital sinus and uh, again borderline dhd although karyotyping was 46 xx and she presented mainly with luts because the urethral opening was there in the vagina and it was a very stenotic kind of opening so she mainly presented to us with obstructive luts uh, and also nocturnal bed wetting because of overflow dribbling the bladder was usually distended and uh, somebody tried to put in a catheter but the urethral opening was not seen so an spc was performed so on examination the labia were normal but the clitoral hypertrophy was significant the urethral meatus was seen on the entry vaginal wall on imaging uh, the other organs were normal but the uterus was again hypoplastic and there was a very poorly developed vagina especially the upper two thirds so in this patient the initial steps are again the same a stay suture has been taken you can see the spc there and then the incision is marked all around in order to do a circumferential circumcoronal degloving incision it is very important to ensure that you have completely degloved the clitoris and gone right up to the base of clitoris in order to achieve a satisfactory post op outcome and you can see here we are now right up to the pubic symphysis in fact i can feel the pubic symphysis and then dorsally the neurovascular bundle has been mobilized and a loop is passed around it in this case we are doing all the dissection from the dorsal aspect we have lifted up the neurovascular bundle and then we are trying to dissect it off the corporal bodies by dissecting in the plane between the bux fascia and the tunica albuginea so just superficial to the tunica albuginea and taking care not to cause any injury to the neurovascular bundle these all children these are very very delicate structures and you have to use a magnifying loop in order to identify the correct planes 
and identify the neurovascular bundles. This has to be very meticulous dissection done slowly and carefully and using very fine instruments. Once you are able to completely separate the corporal bodies from the neurovascular bundle, these are then separated off as you can see here and there are two parts now glands with this neurovascular bundle which has gone up and this is the stump of the corporal bodies which will again be transfixed and divided. Some more dissection on the ventral aspect and then other steps are more or less similar. Excise the redundant skin, kind of wires flaps are being formed in order to push the glands to a more proximal location, a more physiological location. The first suture will be again taken at the apex of the incision and at 12 o'clock for the glandular mucosa. And then a series of sutures on either side to give that cosmetic appearance of a normal appearing Taking marking sutures at the beginning helps you in planning your sutures and avoids any redundant skin or any dog ears. This patient also had the urogenital sinus. The urethral opening was common. In fact, the patient presented because of that reason. So in the same sitting, we also performed a urethroplasty. So this small green urethric catheter that you see below uh, is passing through the urethral opening into the bladder. And this will help us during our subsequent urethroplasty, as I'll show you just now. completes our clitoroplasty and now we move to the urethroplasty. In this case, the opening was almost in the verge of the introitus and therefore we took a stay suture and gave a circum urethral incision all around and then started dissecting urethra of the vaginal wall. And we were fortunate to completely mobilize the urethra right up to the bladder neck. So the junction of vagina and urethra was only at the opening of urethra, otherwise the two structures were separate. So we put the urethra superiorly in a more physiological location, we put a buttress of vaginal wall below the urethra in order to push it upwards and simply achieve the closure. So it was a kind of urethral advancement procedure which was performed and we could manage to put the urethra in a more physiological location away from the vaginal opening. So the two openings were separate. So this is the final appearance of this patient. So coming to a little bit of discussion about it, there is, since the procedure is not that commonly performed, so there are no clear cut guidelines about when should it be performed, what are the optimal indications, which is the best procedure. So all this is left at surgeon's discretion. Although there are now studies coming up with some suggestions uh, regarding timing of surgery, uh, there is a lot of pressure from social groups, NGOs uh, to perform this procedure at a later age when the patient herself is in a position to decide uh, what kind of procedure she wants, whether she wants it or not, and what kind of surgery she wants. However, most of the people would agree that doing an early surgery is much better because of psychological reasons, and especially in a country like India, uh, where society pressures and uh, parental pressures, anxieties are so much. So it's always better to do it at the earliest possible age so that the child can grow up normally with relatively normal genitalia and, and avoid any ostracism. Uh, and in terms of outcomes, however, there is no evidence whether early surgery is better or late surgery is better. There are few studies which have shown that probably complication rate is slightly higher with late surgeries uh, as compared to early surgeries. It also depends on the severity of clitoromegaly. 
the endocrine society guidelines say that for moderate to severe clitoromegaly you should do it early and for mild clitoral uh, hypertrophy uh, the surgery can be postponed uh, till a later age when the patient can take a call in terms of evaluation of surgical outcomes since the aim of surgery was primarily cosmetic therefore that part is taken care of in the perioperative period only post op period only we know the cosmesis but now that we know the functional importance of clitoris in uh, sexual function of a female uh, therefore all the approaches now are focused on preservation of neurovascular bundles providing a reasonable reasonably good degree of sexual satisfaction to the female and because of these reasons uh, the dorsal approaches are no longer preferred as compared to the ventral ones because of better chances of preservation of the neurovascular bundles now the thing is there are so many modifications in the techniques there are a lot of studies which have done their own relative modifications so it's difficult to comment on which technique is better so whatever one particular center finds useful or beneficial for their setup they start sticking to that for example we are sticking to our ventral approach and we are quite happy with the outcome so there are different reports about other approaches as well one study described both preservation of dorsal and ventral tissue uh, although their number was very small and the glance reduction was not done in their patients a uh, kogan et al were probably the first ones who performed the ventral approach but then they also described uh, excision of a central wedge from the dorsal glands and this led to a cosmetically unacceptable appearance in their patients uh, in our technique the ventral approach the innovation is probably the least on the ventral aspect and therefore any resection or any uh, dissection on this aspect probably has got the least chances of injury another advantage of ventral approach is that the surgical scar is hidden so the cosmesis is much better you can remove as much tissue as you want uh, without compromising on the cosmetic outcomes and the most of the nerves are dorsally spread over the glands as well as the shaft so that portion is not touched at all in the ventral approach so we find it a much better uh, procedure apart from cosmesis probably the main outcome which should be assessed is regarding the sexual satisfaction now that is a very very difficult proposition to do most of these surgeries are performed in childhood following up these children till they grow into adults and they become sexually active and then convincing them to a thorough questioning regarding their sexual activities and the pleasure and the sensation in the glands now that is a difficult proposition so therefore uh, there is no really good way of assessing the objective outcomes of this procedure subjective outcomes can be assessed but objective outcomes how much do these now sparing techniques actually benefit the patient that is not very clear and uh, few studies have been done but they are very few in one study they looked at the emg response to stimulation of glands and they found that it remains intact in cases of now sparing uh, clitoroplasty uh, there are few other studies which have used a biotissuometry in order to look at the sensation of the glands in comparison to the inner medial thigh and other labia and they have reported that in the short run at least the nerve sparing procedures do preserve the sensation uh, in these patients few other techniques have been described this paper was published last year where they do not excise the corpora cavernosa at all but uh, they kind of uh, divert divulge the two corpora uh, at least in the proximal two thirds and what this does is as you can see in the diagram it leads to a shortening of the shaft so the glands gets pulled back the shaft is shortened so they claim that uh, without excising anything you can achieve the same purposes but again it's a very recently described technique so no experience with it a video article published just two months back uh suggested another modification in which uh, simply after degloving a rectangular incision is made on the ventral aspect the tunica is removed and then this incision is closed you know, part of the tissue is resected and then this rectangular incision is simply closed uh, like a hanic miklis technique in order to shorten the shaft so again a very limited number of patients very new technique so can't comment on it so so many things have been going on in this field 
and it's good that the technique is becoming popular people are reporting it in future we would have uh, probably more of a consensus maybe in a clearer position to say that this technique is superior or this has got more acceptability so till that happens probably uh, we should perform procedures which to us appear to be the safest so in our experience and now sparing reduction clitoroplasty uh, in the short term has shown excellent outcomes in terms of cosmesis very rare complications ventral approach appears to be much better as compared to dorsal not only in terms of safety but also technically simpler approach and we do need studies larger studies multi center studies with a longer follow up and of course some mechanism of evaluating the sexual function and satisfaction of these patients who have undergone the clitoroplasties in their childhood or long time back so with that i conclude i thank you once again i thank the pure urology group dr chandramohan sir for giving me this opportunity and i'll be very happy to take any questions so thank you sir for the nice discussion and uh, a clear uh, video demonstration of the techniques and anatomical aspects uh, this is a less commonly discussed topic so but i have some doubts from my side which i'd like to clarify so what do you think is the learning curve for the uh, learning this procedure surgical technique sir how many cases after which you get confidence to do independent yes, so anybody who is familiar with male urology part who has done lot of uh, say hypospadias repair where you have done degloving of penis very frequently where you have lifted up the neurovascular bundles very well there is hardly any learning curve maybe two or three cases and you should be good to go but if you are a resident you are training urologist and your exposure even with a male urology procedures is somewhat limited so i would say at least 10 to 15 cases would probably it will take before you are familiar with the anatomy and identification of the tissue planes and so on but the procedure is technically very simple and what do you think is the success rate after that on the sexual aspect of the patient uh, like do you have any scoring system like erectile function score to assess the sex, sexual function aspects of the patient post operatively and clinically like how do you feel what is the success rate as i said earlier it's very difficult to evaluate the sexual outcomes because in developing countries like ours we may still get patients who are presenting in their 18s and 20s Uh, late presentations but in most of the world these patients present very early so the procedure has been performed say 15 years back 20 years back and following that up after 15 20 years to evaluate the sexual function uh, it's a challenging job so there is not much literature about it but there is no reason why if you have done a good now sparing part there is no reason why these patients should not have a normal sexual life there are few studies which have looked at it very limited number one study from uk in which there i think six patients uh, who had undergone the clitoroplasties long time back and they were followed up contacted and uh, surveyed and uh, they reported about i think success rate good sexual outcome and good function they were happily married and having a happy sexual life in about 80% so probably four or out of six or something like that but then again it's a very small number in a one particular center so difficult to comment on it so we need to have some kind of uh, patient reported outcome measures prompts for these patients uh, where uh, they can tell us about the sexual function and then that has to also be compared with normal persons who did not have this procedure normal females who did not undergo any clitoral surgery before any conclusions can be drawn simply looking at the data of patients who had undergone the procedure and saying that 6 out of 10 are happy but unless you compare it to 10 normal women out of which again three may say that they are not happy or something so we need to have this comparative analysis in order to reach a meaningful outcome yes and uh, in the the difference between the recession clitoroplasty and the ones which you have showed you are excising the corpora and the glands part is just tucked inside so that much length will it be accommodated with beneath the inferior pubic ramus or do you take any fixing stitches with the suspensory ligament or it's just the skin which is attached with the bias flap which you're mentioning yes so in the second video uh, we did take the bite when we took from the apex of the bias flap incision skin incision the second bite was taken from the suspensory ligament and then it was taken from the uh, coronal margin of the glands 
in the first case there was no need to do that we could because she was an adult so the labia were well developed uh, the whole external genitalia were very well developed so there was enough space for us to reposition the glands into that area but if the need arises there is something called as a hairpin configuration in which you can fold the glands on itself once you have done the ventral resection the tunica is exposed so you can fold the glands on itself like a hairpin which the girls use and then you can put the whole complex back into the normal position so the and even if then that is shortened you can put it under the labia okay so this kind of hairpin procedure and all will not cause any effect on the urovascular bundle any paresthesia or anything well we are back to the same how do we know that we have not assessed it as yet so that needs to be assessed yes and uh, the urethroplasty which you have shown sir does that patient have any risk of incontinence when you mobilize the urethra all around no in females the only part which we need to be concerned about is the bladder neck area regarding continence so while mobilizing the urethra all around you have to take care that you do not go right up to the bladder neck or maybe beyond bladder neck so that part has to be ensured so you have to constantly feel put in a finger and feel look at the bladder neck if you have any doubt put in a foley's inflate the balloon pull it out so that the balloon is at the bladder neck and that gives you an indicator what is the limit of your dissection beyond which you should not proceed so till bladder neck you can go we do it for female urethroplasty we routinely cut it on 12 o'clock and go right up to the bladder neck so no incontinence okay. and uh, regarding the complications have you ever experienced any patient presenting with hematoma due to the corporal bleed one patient did present with hematoma and that is why we put a drain in this patient in the video which we showed you so it's a very highly vascular area and if your dissection is not proper even if somewhere you have missed the plane there can be oozing and hematoma formation so since then we have become cautious and anywhere we feel that there might be a hematoma or something we just leave a drain for 24 hours a small mini vac can be put so we did face hematoma in one patient one patient had wound infection but uh, surprisingly or uh, fortunately there were no major sequelae of that infection it was minor wound related and it got there have been reports in the literature where complete glands has sloughed off following clitoroplasty due to secondary wound infections we have not experienced something of that sort so what will be the average hospital stay for these patients sir 48 hours okay okay sir so you discharge them with oral antibiotics or something like that yes oral for a week they will be on antibiotics and if the edema is persisting they'll have a nsaid combination some cerasopeptidase diclofenac paracetamol combination that will be there yes okay so th thank you sir thank you very much for the enlightening talk and it's a very less discussed topic so you've brought so much knowledge on to us thank you for sharing your knowledge sir thank you thank you so much it was a pleasure to be with you and i hope uh, people get some meaningful uh, outcome from this presentation thank you so much it was a very crisp presentation and very knowledge very much enriched with knowledge thank you sir thank you so much thank you thank you we'll close this so we'll conclude here we are going offline now